And welcome to the Mike and Brad Show. My name is Mike Murray. And I'm Brad Pierce. <laughs> and you are in for a treat. It's the comeback special, the grand reunion. Before we get into your near-death experience, I do want to tell one quick story, and then we're going to talk about Mike's dramatic comeback to Earth. <laughs> for those of you who, who watched the last episode, you'll notice we did a Hulk Hogan theme episode. It was very fun. It was a Hulk Hogan theme episode. <laughs> and prior to that episode, I sat over here with Mike at Brood Awakenings, and I said, Mike, this week we're going to do the show. Please wear your Hulk Hogan shirt. I'll wear my Hulk Hogan shirt. We're going to do a Hulk Hogan wrestling theme. And he was like, all right, cool. So we get here, we got our Hulk Hogan shirts on, and I had a bag, a cooler. I said, Mike, when we start the show, we're gonna do our taste testing thing, and I'm gonna take something out of this bag, and you're not gonna like it, but pretend you love it. And he goes, I'm not gonna like it. You sure? He said, yup, you're not gonna like it, but pretend you love it. He goes, what if people get mad at me? I said, no one's gonna get mad at you, I promise. <laughs> Pretend you like it. So you want me to pretend I like it? Yes, pretend you love it. Okay, all right, good. And then we start the show, everything's going, hey everybody, Hulk Hogan day, ba ba ba. And I take out two Hulk Hogan real American beers. And Mike's- Wait, 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 time out. You gotta tell them why you wanted it to be spontaneous and that I love it. What your, what your um, goal was with the clip. Yeah, I was excited. So I've met Hulk Hogan a few times and I've talked to his son a bunch, really not, both very nice guys. And I was like, oh, we'll do this cool clip promoting uh, Hulk Hogan and everything, and I'll send it down to Clearwater to my friends, uh, Hulk and Nick uh, Hogan. And then so, we're famous, and then we'll and be then, yeah, And then, yeah, hopefully point. they become our friends, and they fly us in their <laughs> private jet around the world. So we'll go to wrestling events. So I take out the beers, and right away Mike's playing along. He's like, oh, yeah, this is cool, blah, blah, blah. Mike takes one sip <laughs> of the beer, and he goes, oh, this is terrible. Oh, man. That's so fun. So, uh, fortunately for us, uh, the Hogan family doesn't often watch the Mike and Brad show, <laughs> like most of America. But anyways, that's my story. Mike is back from the dead. Welcome back, Mike Murray. I am glad to be back. Um, however, I'm just glad my seat is not occupied some, by somebody else that we know, and that somebody else goes by the name of Jocelyn Pierce. So if she's out there, watch Jocelyn Try to take my spot. She did. It was close. She was trying to take my spot, and um, she tried to pull that, like you know, what they did with Biden and push him out. <laughs> you know, it was, it was go, oh, cool. I was my, my blood pressure hadn't even come down from the med <laughs> yet, and she was in here in my seat, literally in my seat. We all got a together. And Jocelyn, a Brad and Jocelyn show. Yes, my niece Jocelyn. Much more talented than both of us. She sings, she acts, she, she plays the piano. She uh, and most of us decided Mike was clearly no she longer can't healthy tell enough. tell jokes. <laughs> she, was, she realized that Mike is no longer uh, physically and mentally up for the challenge of doing this show. So we took a photograph in this room in these chairs just to screw with Mike while he was in the hospital and say his job has been taken. But Mike can never be replaced. He's back from the dead. Tell our viewers what happened here. Oh, well, um, going back, it was Wednesday night, I had a, um, an attack on my pancreas, and the attack was brought on by a leaking gallbladder. Leaking gallbladder. And <clears throat> a lot of people have gallbladder problems, you know, they, ha they have them, and then they have an elective surgery to have it taken out, because re you can live without it. Um, but some people have attacks on the gallbladder, and it has to come out in an emergency situation. That was my thing. So Wednesday night, I had the attack. I was up all night in a lot of pain. Thursday, I went to urgent care. Went to urgent care, they did the test straight away, and um, they called the ambulance. As soon as the ambulance showed up, I don't know if I told you this, um, um, Smithfield Fire Department, they pulled the, they sent like 10 people because they must have given them a heads up. We're gonna need some, <laughs> we're need some help with this guy, right? <laughs> so they brought the stuff over and they had like the sling from um, Mystic Aquarium to get me. <laughs> and as soon as the, the firefighter sees me, he goes, hey, funny for funds. Said, As Mike's dying. <laughs> I said, You're hey. so funny. <laughs> oh. I'm like, Fox, make noise. Get me in the truck. <laughs> um, so we went to Merriam, and um, they, they, after a bunch of tests, they said, yes, it's got to come out, but we can't take it out until your pancreas calms down. Mm -hmm. And then that set off, like, it was 125 hours of no water, no food, not even ice chips, a lot of pain, a lot of nausea. 
I, I didn't have the strength to look at my phone or watch TV, just sat there. And um, they finally took it out. So I was, that was Thursday morning. Finally took it out Monday around noon. And um, I've been on the men since. Wait, it's a little slow going, but I'm here. Um, the upside is, look how slim he looks. Already look slimming how down. Slim. My diet has changed, um, which is really good. And, um, and you know, I've got to be a little more careful what I eat now because the gallbladder is not there to help process it. So now, for those of you who watch the Mike and Brad show, you know that I very often make fun of Mike for being fat uh, because I love him and I want him to live. And I've told him so many times, one of these days I'm going to get a call. I'm going to get a call and I'm going to be so mad at you. So when his wife, Kathy, called me that day, I was like, this is the day. She's going to tell me I had a heart attack. Joss is going to take over the show from now on. It's over. <laughs> and uh, I'm just glad he made it through. I'm glad that he's going to get healthy. And, uh, you know, it's one way to lose weight. Which brings us to everyone's favorite time of the show, the taste test, everybody. Oh, it's going to be fruits and vegetables. Every like week on the Mike and Brad show, we do a taste test. It's usually cheeseburgers or milkshakes. Oh, no. But Mike is... Oh, dying. I was right! <laughs> Oh man! Oh, I'm gonna tell you is, right now, I don't like I don't like two of the apples right there. Mike is dying, so we are Look, very limited. Am I, supposed to, am I supposed to act excited? Yes, you're supposed right, to act. Go. I don't even like apples, for the record. I really don't. They don't do anything for me. I think they're one of the worst fruits. You, but I'm trying to keep you alive, and I, it was yeah. it was either this or French fries, and you're back in the hospital. So no, no I'm I'm on board with the fruits and vegetables. <laughs> So today we're going to do a Granny Smith green apple That's my versus a honey crisp red apple. No, I thought that was a um, I thought that was a um, golden delicious. It's a it's a honey crisp. I mean a red delicious. Yeah. So these no good, no good. We're doing it. It's too top. Whether you like it or not, we're honey doing crisp, it. Honey crisp is the they're like the number one. Well, I don't spare. Not everybody can afford the honey crisp. I don't did you know that? any expense for Mike's return episode. Did, yeah. How much did, did the budget, did this bust the budget these of the Mike and These four apples, Brad? these four apples cost me over $5. Amazing. That's insane. You could have fed a family of six at McDonald's. I, <laughs> <laughs> I could have got a super size wow. value meal for the price of these four Remember Super Size? That was awesome. When you could just go into McDonald's and you're like, take every disgusting thing I ordered and make it as big as possible. Give me make it huge. <laughs> um, so here's what we're going to do. Uh, as I say every time, I do not want our poor audience's ears to have to listen to us chew. So we're going to just do one bite of each to spay. I hate the sound of someone chewing. Really? It drives me crazy. Crazy. Huh. So when you answer the phone and you're chewing, I want to oh, hang up right away. My wife hates it when I, I talk on the phone all the time and I'm chewing all the time because I don't care. And, <laughs> and um, they, everybody tells me, my family hates the way I chew. And you know those TikToks showing the, like the monkey chewing or the horse chewing? Send this to somebody that chews it like this. That's what, I get those all day long from my family. <laughs> uh, your wife and I have a lot in common. We agree on a lot. I agree with her on that. But I just hate anybody chewing. So we'll keep it simple. I did. I washed these off at home. Whoa! Used the, yes, I was very. I don't want to get. What was it? Asbestosides they spray on the fruit? What is the thing that? That's they a scam. Just rinse it with water. All right. I rinsed it with water. All right. So we're gonna start with the honey crisp. Yeah. Is that we're starting with these? No, start with the because I want to right. cleanse my palate with the honey right. crisp because I don't like Granny Smith. I don't have a strong opinion on apples. I never eat them. It's so. a, Granny Smith is like the um. Airheads of apples. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> that is the most insulting thing I've ever heard. It really heard about is. It, about an Have, apple. When's the last time you had a Granny Smith? It's been a while. Well, well let's go. This is a fair while since you haven't had an apple. Not impressed. It, I mean, it's top. It's fine. It's not as bad. You may it sound like I was going to bite into this and spit it out. It's not bad. It's not bad. It's not a bad taste. I want I want my fruit to be refreshing. That's why I like I like like cantaloupe, I like all oh, melons. Jelly donuts he likes. That's technically a fruit. <laughs> but Granny Smith uh, is my last choice for an apple. Okay, so you already you're I mean you've made your decision before we began. Mm -hmm. You're kind of ruining the game. But no. for me that was fine. It, you made it sound like it was gonna be disgusting. Have you ever had a Honeycrisp? I honestly don't know. I mean I've had a red apple obviously, this but I don't apple, know. And I'm not kidding, fans out there will tell you, 
it's probably their favorite apple, but at the same token, it's the most expensive apple you can buy. No prior, joke. Prior to this morning, I knew this as a red apple <laughs> and this as a green apple. That's the I thing. literally was the market, leading. There's like the, 10 different choices yeah. and they all look the same. And I, I didn't I, know that this was You gotta was look the, at the sticker and make sure it lines up with the one because it could I, go from somebody else. I didn't realize this was the Ferrari of apples. I really didn't. 100%. I was just like, I'm gonna grab a red one. I looked at the thing. Okay, this says honey crisp. So, all right. Next time, look at the prices and see the difference. Very refreshing, huh? It is, it is better. It's, it's a better taste. And, it, and it's refreshing too. It's like. Yeah, it's a like, better taste. So, a quick mm. win today. Quick win, honey crisp wins uh now for the last couple of weeks the underdog has won lee stacks beat pringles which is an underdog honeydew beat duncan huge underdog but today i would say uh honey crisp is no underdog because you no, said it's it, no, expensive everybody knows it's it's a top dog well for mike's big return i didn't want to spare any expense we went right for the top thing mm. all right let's stop chewing for our audiences uh but those uh that is the conclusion honey crisp congratulations you win uh, I don't know who can thank us you for promoting anybody, them. Nobody. Some guy in a farm somewhere. You know anybody in the honey quick um, <laughs> industry? Yeah, industry. <laughs> Paul Brad and have him come fail an audition. We're not making, <laughs> We're not going to get famous with the Hulk Hogan thing, but maybe we'll be huge on honey crisp farms in Wyoming. Uh, so that is our taste test. Mike uh, is back from the dead. We wanted to talk about that. Uh, now, we mentioned Hulk Hogan, and we did a big Hulk Hogan special last episode, and um, some people don't know Mike almost died. So somebody commented today on a video I pulled and said, you guys are still wearing those red Hulk Hogan shirts. I'm like, we haven't done a new episode. Mike was, was MIA. Um, but all that to say, I don't know if you know this, Mike Murray, Hulk Hogan is coming to Rhode Island next week. Hulk Hogan is coming to bless our little state. We gotta to get him as a guest on the Mike and Brad show. <laughs> it's the least he could do. Hey, he should. if we got money to splurge on four apples, <laughs> I'm sure we can get Mr. M. Terry, Terry in here to do a spot. For the, for the cost of four Honeycrisp apples, you could book Hulk Hogan for an afternoon here at Brood Awakenings. <laughs> he should come in here and body slam us and then give us the big leg because we made fun I of think, his I finishing think I'd move. rather get the big leg because it's clearly not that threatening. Oh, it's not bad at all. No, uh, it's not bad at all. But he's coming around. He's going to be at Moonshine Alley. Uh, Which is one of our stops on the comedy bus. Yes, we're promoting. And we didn't, we didn't talk about this. No. Which I showed up with this because it was the only shirt I had that was clean. We're gonna have to, so Mike Keller, if you're watching, which you're probably not because you have a job, you should, uh, it's time for Mike Murray to get a new shirt. A, it's too faded, and soon Mike will fit into an extra small because he's no longer allowed to yeah. eat food on his new diet. Yeah. Once I stop working out, I'll look better in my Hulk shirt. <laughs> you're gonna be shredded, dude. Shredded. You're gonna look like, uh, like Terry Crews. That's what you're gonna look like. Um, but Hulk Hogan's coming. That's very, very exciting news. It is. Um, and um, another thing we wanted to talk about today, and it's unfortunate, I hate this time of year, because for, for one, we didn't get an August. August, we skipped, August used to be a summer month. It's no longer a summer month. Fall started, bring out the disgusting pumpkin shit everywhere. Oh. Pumpkin flavored oh. coffee, pumpkin beer, oh, pumpkin uh, the cupcakes. Whiff. It's disgusting. One of our fans out there, Nelly, my good friend Nelly, loves pumpkins. Everything it's disgusting. It's disgusting. It's a scam by the pumpkin people, Brad. <laughs> Think about it. No other time during it, if it tastes so good, wouldn't the pumpkin flavors be, be there all, all year? Oh, no, I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more. And not only that, um, a lot of people don't know it. So I don't think you know it either, too, Brad. Of all the green vegetables, greens, mm -hmm. what would you say they say is the healthiest one? For green vegetables? Green vegetables. I don't know, string beans or broccoli? No, close. No, the second one is kale. Oh, I forgot. I should know. Kale is like the yeah, big kale, thing. Kale is a green. I so, forgot. It's so gross, I forgot it existed. Do you existed. know kale is a scam? Yeah, you told me it's bad for you, right? It's kale, it's actually, it's a scam by the cane. It's the same thing with the pumpkin people. Same mm -hmm. thing with the smallest people. Smalls are horrible. Smalls yeah. are horrible. Nobody was buying graham crackers, right? Yeah. Nobody was buying marshmallows. Throw some chocolate in there. Let's set it on fire. <laughs> Boom. There's the summer months for you. Of, Pumpkin. Now the kale pot. Of Mike's 
ongoing conspiracy <laughs> theories that we sometimes argue about. These are by far my favorite. <laughs> the yeah. smallest conspiracy is I, the greatest. <laughs> forget where's fake, the lie. Forget where's the lie. Forget fake in the moon landing. <laughs> forget the, the JFK assassination controversy. This is it for me. Smalls and kale. That's who you're gonna look out for. Area 51. It's nothing but kale and smalls when you break it. Now, <laughs> kale is a story. <laughs> I'm not even making this up. Kale, do you know who would, not long ago, and when we're going back maybe 15 years ago, let's go back 15 years ago. Kale's largest purchaser, largest, okay. like the biggest buyer of kale was Pizza Hut. What? For, oh, their salad, exactly. for their salad bar? On the salad bar, mm. I was garnished on the outside of the dishes. Right, it wasn't even edible. It would, of course, it's still not and edible. It was still, and exactly. <laughs> it's disgusting. So, so the people at the kale blink, hey, we only got one customer, it's Pizza Hut. We got to do something. Mm. They started feeding out the benefits of kale, and that's how kale became. And, and, and nobody, and if you're out there saying, I love kale, you're lying. Nobody likes I'll kale. I'll tell you to your face, you're lying. No, nobody, nobody likes, likes kale. kale. And, no, oh, I tried. I tried juicing at one of my um, experiences of to try to lose weight, and kale was a big part of that. And I'm, it was the nastiest. It's disgusting. The nastiest of vegetables, and um, so that's the story. Kale's a kale's a scam. So, so your point is, if I'm understanding correctly, is what they did was they lied and said it's good for you. You're saying it's not even good for no, you. No, no, it, it's good for you, but not in a lot large amounts. Okay. Yeah. Why do you th what do you think ended up like in the hospital? Too much kale. That's what did it. It wasn't the KFC. <laughs> he ran out of kale. Yeah. It wasn't the small cheese pepperoni <laughs> and black olive pizza <laughs> that I consumed by myself at the trivia Wednesday night. <laughs> when Kathy called me that morning, she literally said, this guy ate a full pizza last <laughs> night and I didn't send him in an ambulance. Uh, so uh, kale and the smallest thing, uh, look, I'm making fun of you, but it does make sense. Because who the hell has ever bought a graham cracker other than a first small in their life? Zero. Only out of fire does somebody buy graham and crackers. When, when do you buy marshmallows? That's it. For the smallest for the fire. 100%. I'm, I'm going to wear a tinfoil hat. I'm in on this conspiracy. And, and, this is the, the, and these are full-size marshmallows. You There's no other so, reason to buy them. You got me so lost in this conspiracy thing, I forget what the hell my point even was. I was going to say, <laughs> oh, I know. I remember. I was like, I'm lost in, this, in the weeds of the kale conspiracy. I was going to say... August, we, we went right from July to September this year. But my point was saying is the reason I hate this time of year. It's is pumpkins coming on. Well, that's one of, one of the many reasons is the pumpkin thing. But I, um, summer's my favorite season, for one. Uh, and you can tell, some, you feel summer ending. And for years and years and years, we've had the fortune in New England of being like, well, yes, summer's ending. Yes, it's going to get cold. It's okay, because Tom Brady and Bill Belichick are going to kick so much ass this year. And that's all over now. You this football season could not be any worse coming up. There's no, literally, like, I made fun of the Olympics. I would rather watch curling all day <laughs> than this year's football season. It is going to be so painful. We had one exciting player, Judon, and he's gone to nobody's surprise. Uh, I knew he'd be gone because yeah. he's too good to be on our shit team. Uh, and anyways, I think so, they're gonna surprise you. They're gonna win one game. I will be surprised. I think they're gonna surprise you. I, I, they're gonna I be mean, terrible. Terrible. Like that's what happens with teams like this. Uh, when they, when everybody thinks they're gonna be really bad, I think the, uh, as opposed to all the bad teams that are like historically bad forever, mm. the Patriots, I, I gotta feel are different. Their organization's different. They have that mentality. And these new guys coming in, they're gonna have that chip on their soldier, Brad. And I think I think they're gonna they're gonna be like, hey, we're we're gonna keep this thing going a little bit. We're gonna revisit I'm gonna this predict, topic. I'm gonna predict. All right. I'm gonna predict at least a, a 500 season, which is very ambitious. That's yeah, that's very optimistic of you. I disagree. We are gonna revisit this in the future for sure. I think Mike is wrong about this. And and somebody asked, I think it was uh, Bragg, our friend Bragg. He, he said, maybe you guys could, could talk about Tom Brady in the, in, the booth, in the commentating booth on Fox this year. I wish 
I was excited for that. I wish. But, I mean, is that what I want to see Tom Brady doing? No. I, I want, if he, he's not on the field. It's like, uh, I'm going to go to see uh, my favorite groups, the Beastie Boys. I'm going to go see the Beastie Boys, but they're doing magic tricks and juggling. They're not, they're not, perform, uh, whoa, they're not whoa, doing whoa, any whoa, music. Whoa. Let's not knock magic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, Mike, as you know, is a retired <laughs> magician. Well, no, see, Brad, Tom Brady was, um, what's the word, abnormally? Awesome. Yeah, he was. <laughs> the word you're looking for is unbelievable. It was, it was a once in a lifetime thing, and we were fortunate enough for him to be on our team and, and double fortunate enough that he played so many seasons. Um, it was time to move keep on. Keep talking, keep talking. It was time to move on. I think him being in the booth, like, see, when you seen Tony Romo, he was in the booth, everybody got excited because he was bringing this knowledge to, to the camera that he was, because he's so fresh from the game. Tom Brady is the greatest. I think it's going to be very good to watch how he, because he could literally still play. Everybody knows that. Yeah. Even if he came back tomorrow and started playing, he could make any team better and make them better and play in the top 10 quarterback. At least the top ten. I agree with that, and I wish he would just do it. it Come play the move on. You know, you know, he, he had a great run. Um, I, I'm interested and I'm excited to see him. At least we can at least see him and, and hear yeah. him. That, honestly, I am gonna watch any game that he's commentating. Yeah. I don't care if it's the two shittiest teams in the league. I'm gonna watch it for it. So, so I'm not excited, but it's enough to make me tune in. But I'm dreading, uh, I'm dreading this year. I'm mm. not excited about it all. I'm just very excited. The Boston Celtics are the champions, baby. And we won gold with three Celtics on the Olympic basketball team. So shout out to the Celtics for keeping us alive here in New England because the Red Sox are horrible. The Bruins are a joke. And the Pats will never be good again the rest of our lives. They will never be good. We had the best era. It is over. And all we have left to look forward to is honey crisp apples. That's all we and got. And those positive words are brought to you <laughs> by golden delicious apples. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, Hire Brad Pierce for your next motivational speech <laughs> and pump up your sales staff. <laughs> now, you, now, Mike, I know you're deaf. Can you tell that I still, it's, I lost my voice a month ago. I still don't have it. Did you hear? I can't laugh. When I laugh, I, I have no voice. You didn't notice that? No, I didn't laugh. I yeah, didn't. It, it, it doesn't, I, my voice is not fully returned. That's I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's happening. It's weird. Anyways, uh, that's not interesting. No. Uh, now, Mike, I know you've been in the hospital the last three weeks, and you haven't been able to open your eyes. <laughs> Any chance you've got to got to catch Deadpool three yet? Catch what? Deadpool three, Deadpool not and Wolverine. Yet, no. Oh, okay. So it's an excellent film. I went to see it twice in the theater. It is the number one grossing R-rated movie ever. 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 And uh, excellent film. It. I'm not going to do any spoilers. Was it funny? Very funny. I'm not gonna do any spoilers. I will say it did feel to me more like a, a tribute to the fans than a film, if that hmm. makes sense. It was more like, for nerds like me, it was like, a, 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 here, this is for you guys. We're gonna throw all this shit in there to surprise you and get you excited. How long was Marvel, the movie? It's over two hours, I think. Marvel has um, completely shit the bed for like the last like I don't know six seven years or whatever, and this was like Ryan Reynolds like I will save the Enterprise. That's why uh, he calls yeah. himself Marvel Jesus because he saved really yes because he basically saved Disney. Uh, but anyways, excellent film, uh, very funny. But yeah, it was like a tribute for nerds. Mike makes fun of me for being a nerd and superheroes and stuff like that, but. Uh, there's a lot of cool He's stuff. not as nerdy right. as our buddy Gary. No, nobody is nerdier no. than Gary uh, no. Boletto. Uh, Gary Batman Boletto he, is his he, fighting he name. Works, he works for his next Lego purchase. Yeah, his basement. <laughs> so our friend is a professional MMA fighter, and his whole basement is covered in Legos. Yeah, it's, it's pretty ridiculous. And he not the type nerd. of Legos you're going to step on by accident. These oh. things go on to a oh, shrine. It's, yeah, it's like a full enterprise. I think he's got... I think his Lego like houses are worth more than my actual house I live in. I think it, they're, like, they're nicer. I, um, so anyways, I brought up Deadpool because I don't think I've ever asked you 
Maybe I have, but I don't recall. Did I ever ask you what superpower you would choose? What superpower would you choose? I don't think you ever asked me that. Um, that's a tough one because I never gave it any thought. Super gallbladder? <laughs> he would, super gallbladder? He would like his gallbladder back. If any of you guys could donate a gallbladder to Mike Murray, he had that's to have That's what we should removed. do. Have somebody donate their gallbladder. <laughs> that can be back to normal. <laughs> Eating pizzas again. Right? If you watch. So, yeah, let's um, have blood tests. If you Can gotta you help get me, a, a gallbladder? Gall bladder, the number going across the screen on the bottom. <laughs> Please contact me. I'll take it. You don't need it. Because they do like heart transplants and different trans... Can you transplant a gallbladder? Can you do that? I don't see why not. Mike told me for years when I would say, Mike, I'm worried about your health. He would say, Brad, my doctor says, I am in great shape, I'm very healthy. I'm like, who's your doctor, Kevorkian? Because he's lying to you. <laughs> and uh, he said for years and years, and, uh, but then Mike, when he came out of the hospital, I said, Mike, I told you you're gonna fire the doctor. He goes, Brad, I haven't seen my doctor in eight years. <laughs> Turns, last time he saw My whole life is a scam. <laughs> it works for I'm the s'mores of humans. <laughs> I'm a pumpkin spice coffee. <laughs> Buy me from October. The end of August to the end of October. <laughs> That's it. Then it's just junk again. Go, go in your cupboard right now. You know what you've got in your cupboard? And go in the way in the back. Move past everything. You've got a can of pumpkin pie. Oh. Yeah. Oh, nasty. pumpkin pie is disgusting. Oh. It's so and then, bad. And, and then people eat it. And, then what they, and they, they think, oh my God, it's good. Especially if they've got an aunt or grandmother that makes it. Mm. But what do they do before they eat it? Put a bunch of whipped cream on One hundred percent to kill get rid the, of the taste. Yeah, kill the taste. I said, you know what you're loving? You're loving the whipped cream. That whipped cream is awesome. Why? How do I know that whipped cream is awesome? Because I ate whole packages of that whipped cream. <laughs> cool Whip is the best thing. <laughs> and if nobody's around, the can. But <laughs> so donate uh, a gallbladder for this guy was the point yeah. of that story. And I almost forgot. I, I, I was trying to keep it in my head so I could forget. So we've covered. This is gonna be the last thing we talk about before we go. Uh, we've covered on uh, multiple episodes now that I auditioned for Sam Adams, your cousin from Boston, didn't get it. Mike and I both auditioned for Ocean Spray Cranberry Juice. If you ever see the commercial where the guy is wearing the overalls, he's in a cranberry bog, we both didn't get that. Even I, though I wore, even though I wore waiters in my audition, I should have had the hat. I do have a hat at home. If I wore, only wore that hat, I could have been the cranberry guy. So if you see the ocean spray with the guy in the cranberry bog, <laughs> both of us had audition. Then last time I told you how uh, Boston Casting was looking for a Jeep. They said something about, could we use your Jeep? I said, I took nice pictures of my Jeep. They didn't hire my Jeep. And then this week... They wouldn't even hire something <laughs> you own. That's crazy. Your Jeep doesn't even mess up lines. Your Jeep, your Jeep is not goofy. My Jeep your is Jeep, not talented your enough. Your Jeep looks awesome. And still, nope. My Jeep would have won it. It would have. But you traded it in for, for a jacuzzi. hot tub. Uh, <laughs> which is a weird trade-in. That's a very strange dealership. Anyways, I say all that to say this, Mike. Uh, I am right now in another process with slate casting in Boston of a thing that, let's face it, you know I'm not going to get it, but I am currently in a thing. They were looking for Boston Celtics fans. Who's the bigger Boston I'm like, dude, well, I mean, look at this Celtics tattoo, everybody. Look Who's, at that. Who spent a thousand dollars on a Celtics tattoo? A real fan. So, I... <laughs> uh, I sent some photos. They said, cool, do a video for us. I did the video. They, they responded, said, thank you for the video. And now we're waiting. I don't even know what it is. I know it shoots in September. I know it's Boston Celtics fans. So look forward uh, to me complaining in here soon about how I didn't get the pot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, me, me, the funny thing about the uh, ocean spray thing was he did the audition and I was the voice a voice actor off screen mm -hmm. feeding the lines to him and we filmed it in his spare room at his house and then he got it it came out that they were looking for somebody older mm -hmm. so he said Mike so we swapped we just swapped it we didn't change the background <laughs> scene and now Brad was the voice who they just heard on an audition and he's like Pastor Gr Cranberries <laughs> 
And we thought it was so funny. It was the same exact room. Everything was Everything the same. Was we the just same. switched and we spots. Like, it would be awesome if they, if they recognized the fact that it's, everything was the they same. They had to have. Uh-huh. Um, so anyways, listen, uh, Mike, I'm glad you're alive. It's good to have you I'm back. Thank you back. for tuning in. And uh, thank you. It was a fun episode. Good day. <laughs>